The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. And welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. Exciting week for Marshall basketball. Uh, we got us, we, the herd, uh-huh. me and the guys, got into the, the finals, the NCAA basketball finals, for the third time ever and won our first ever NCAA finals game. Hey, go herd. We are go Marshall. Herd. We, we are Marshall. Hey, you know what? I've been thinking about it. We are Marshall. Last night, the herd was thoroughly drubbed by WVU to su- the surprise of oh, probably a few diehards, but like not me personally, because I kind of suspected that, um, that, you know, that full court press. You know, but and- we thundered we thundered right to second place in that match, and that's how I like to think. In each basketball match, there's a first place and a second place, and you can't feel too bad about second place. But I don't bring you guys here to talk about What are we the, talking about? I don't want to talk about being in the paint and Dunkaroos and all the great basketball what? lingo. I want to address something that I don't know how it's kind of weird that we haven't addressed on this program before and I wanted to bring it before you now. Are you two, my brothers, aware that the name of the coach of the Thundering Herd is Dan Dan Tony? Wait. <laughs> Question. I, I'm, I'm, are you I'm, aware of yeah, the yes. fact Hold that the on. coach of the Thundering Herd, the basketball team in our hometown, and we have never brought this up, the man's name is Dan Dan Tony. Okay, is it Dan? Yes. Separate word Dan, separate word Tony, like Tony, Tony, Tony? N- no, it's as though his name is Dan, first name Dan. Uh huh. Last name, capital D, apostrophe. Capital A N T O N I. It's like a fantasy version of if his name was indeed. It, it just is. He's Dan, an adventure Dan zone Tony. NPC who, like, we had a hard time naming, and then he so went. This on is to- like a Bond, James Bond kind of thing. Well, no, it would right. be a James James Bond. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. That's right. Dan Dan Tony Dan 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 Tony Dan 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 Tony. He's three men, and that's what makes him so great at coaching basketball. As we all know, a full basketball team is three people, uh, and he can just sort of divide. His alar is so strong, he divides his mind into three parts, and one is thinking about passing. The other one is thinking about catching and shooting. The third one is thinking about blocking the defenders. And he's he's just, he's a whole team in there in that brain. Right. You seem around. a little off, Dan Dan Tony. Yeah, Dan too is thinking about lunch. You know uh, how it is. Now, I, I wanted to say that if he was the head of a crime family, uh-huh. mm-hmm. he would then be Don Dan Dan Tony. Is yeah. one thing I wanted to say is he would be Don Dan Dan Tony. Now, if he was the head of a professional crime family who fought his way there. By achieving a high rank in a martial art, then he could be fifth, fifth Don Don Dan Dan Tony. Uh huh. Yeah, but that is, is it, as but, far uh, as I've also, gotten. If yeah. he had written a Broadway musical that won some kind of award, he could be Don Don Dan Dan Tony Tony Award winner. Yeah, <laughs> that is very good. He could be fifth Don, Don, Dan, Dan, Tony, Tony Award winner. <laughs> I think that's all the Dan, Dan, Tony I have. Hold on, this we can get more. We can, can get. You we think can... we could get more? Do you think we could get more? Um, it... If he was also a hat, uh-huh. you could say to someone, <laughs> Don, fifth Dan, Don, Dan, Dan, Tony, Tony Award winner. 
Yes. That's one thing you could say. If he was in an early 90s hip-hop group that created the hit single, If I Had No Loot, he could be, and also was the other shit in the joke that I've already forgot, he could be Don Don, Dan Dan, Tony, Tony Award winner of Tony, Tony, Tony. Uh Uh-huh. That, if, and that's, I think, as much as we can squeeze in there. If you though. were only permitted to wear him at daybreak, uh-huh. then one thing you could say is, at dawn, dawn, fifth dawn, dawn, Dan Dan, Tony, Tony Award winner of Tony, Tony, Tony. That's it, end of joke. And, well, and if that oh, was a little God. bit too much, then you could... <laughs> Wait, say yours again, Justin. <laughs> okay, at dawn, dawn, <laughs> fifth dawn, 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 Tony... <laughs> Award winner of Tony, Tony, Tony. And tone it down. Tone it down. Okay. That's too much. All right. So that was a very good joke about a college basketball coach. (laughs) Who is probably going through one of the worst days of his life right now. (laughs) But hey, he should feel good about their performance. Nobody expected him to get that far. Congratulations to the herd. Congratulations to at Don, Don, fifth Don, Don. Dan, Dan, Tony, Tony Award winner of Tony, Tony, Tony. Tony, Tony, Tony right. Dan. So, should we get the advice, or yeah, we let's could get talk more? We, I'm interested in talking more about college basketball. If we want to sort of circle back to the who's remaining in the NCAA tournament, um, and just thank check you to out. Every, thank you to everybody who submitted their um, questions for the, our special project. We think that's going to be episode 400, probably. Maybe, yes. yes. Maybe. We did a weird, we had it's, a weird day last we week. We had a weird day last week, and you will be privy to it all. Uh, but for now, it's 398, so let's just ruminate in the the castle of sand that we've built for ourselves. Here we go. Now, I, I will, just a quick preface. This first question was a vacation question, but I feel like it's it's fairly universal, so I included it here in our regular episode. I've made a habit of designating Saturday as my personal day of rest and self care. So, so the Bible says. Uh, B- it's Bible been says. Great. Bible says do that. Bible says treat yourself on the Sabbath. It's been great, but sometimes I struggle to turn off my power switch. Robot. I still want. I still want to look. Uh, robot alert! Everybody, shut down the show. Uh, I still want to look at my emails, look through Twitter for horrible news, do chores, and read watch things that I feel like I'm supposed to read slash watch instead of things I actually enjoy. I know some cultures have rituals that mark their day of rest, but I don't want to be appropriative. I do, however, want to send my brain the signal that it's okay to be chill for a day. Any suggestions? That's from Tired and Jittery in Jersey. Can you buy a second phone? That's sort of a off-court buddy. A for, weekend phone. A weekend phone for Saturday and Sunday. And on this phone, do you delete a few essential apps. The right. first you want to get off there is Twitter, of course. And then if you really want to go whole hog, maybe just go ahead and take that off the old working week phone as well. Oh, holy it's shit. Gonna, I've just had I, a million well, dollar idea. Maybe a billion well, dollars. You could, let me, just, you let me, could just let Griffin finish his okay. bad idea, apparently. His non-million dollar idea. Well, Griffin gave it be, to me. Just let, me, let, yours, let, me let, yours, let yours accrue some interest. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then L- <laughs> let me finish my six dollar idea. Okay. The second app you want to delete off your phone is phone. You, nobody needs to get a hold of you on Saturday. Right. Nothing. Nothing important ever happens on Saturday. And then I, to be honest, I had other stuff, but I feel like the wind's really been taken this out of my sails. My, this is my weekend phone. It doesn't do phone. It doesn't do Twitter, and it has all the different kinds of Angry Birds installed mm-hmm. right on. And it. they're Happy Birds because it's the weekend. I even got a legal download of Flappy Bird on here. My cousin Rick put on it for me. So (laughs) thanks, Rick. So here's my idea. It's an app for your phone that is like Twitter, but when you go to it, it just generates good news and tells you there's nothing going on and go back to what you're doing. And I call it Fritter. This is, this is, so two things. One, you think that the, Valuation of this idea is one million dollars, <laughs> maybe even two million. The second thing is that you thought it was worth interrupting my six dollars. Well, because idea. think about it. So you get the impulse to check Twitter, right? You go to Fritter, and it's just like, yeah, nothing's happening. And like go, so like you get it's it's kind of like you know the the nicotine gum 
of oh. Twitter. So you get your fix of going and checking Twitter, but it's just all good news and like nothing's going on. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you can go, and maybe Fritter also just like you program in times and it just shuts down. It puts your phone in airplane mode from like a certain time to a certain time and you can't unlock it. Yeah, so, I mean, there's lots of ways that we could handle this. We could just do a version of Twitter that every time you click on a tweet, interact with a tweet or whatever, a uh, Venga bus starts playing, but it gets <laughs> twice as loud with each sort of interaction you have. And after a while, it, it'll destroy your home. It'll destroy the sound waves coming from your phone will blow up your house. And so you can't... Um, you, you you just will be like, okay, that's enough. I looked at three tweets and it's already like, <laughs> I can't. I'm done. I there's nothing. Is that the name me. of that song? Yes. yes. I didn't know it had a name. Yeah. yeah. Um. I just thought it was like one of the old ones. It's just like a wait, what? Like one of the old ones, like Cthulhu. Okay. I love <laughs> the yeah. I love the the how hard you hit that word. I've been sick. <laughs> um. Yeah, you got to take care of yourself on the weekends. I just looked. I, I've gone five days. We're recording this on Monday. I've gone five days without tweeting. God almighty, it feels good. Hey, Lord y'all. Alive. Hey, y'all, listen. I love interacting with y'all on Twitter, and I love hearing from everybody, and I read what you say from time to time. Everybody delete Twitter from your phone right now. Stop listening to this and get rid of it. You will be fine. Do it on your computer. You do it on, you do it on your computer, but you come you come to Twitter when you're ready for it. Don't yes. let it be like fucking in you, on you, around you, inside you, in your that, lungs, in your brain, fucking 24-7. That was one of my favorite things about being on the cruise, being on the joke. It was like my my hand would go to Twitter. And it was like the universe, the cruise was saying, no, I'm not going to let you do this, Travis. I'm not giving you internet right now. And I can't and I would it. instead interact with my friends in real life and like my my wife and myself and the world around Gross. me. I know. You I interact with I interacted with myself. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you C- mean? C pervert. One thing that also will actually help with this, I don't know if you're into meditation at all. But um, that could really help to give you control back over, like, the the impulse. Like, to it'll make your actions a lot more deliberate, I think. Even, like, 10 minutes of focusing on your breathing in and out in a relaxed position. You're going to be a lot less compulsive, I think. Because a lot of what you're reacting to is, like, just lizard brain habit uh, uh, that you do during the week. So I think... Try a little bit of meditation to start the day, um, and y- you may have a little find you have a bit more control over the impulse to do some of this stuff. And also, plug your phone in and walk the hell away from it. You'll yep. be the other shocking thing is how frequently like my desire to look at Twitter is outweighed by my desire to not stand up. It, yeah. it wins out every single time. Um, we need to, I feel like maybe recalibrate because we just did a bunch of really good advice there and not jokes. And people come to us and they expect us to be like, fart, Dan, on, Dan, Tony. fart on your phone and then I you won't fi- want to I touch. assume they're still laughing about the Dan, Dan, Tony yeah. stuff. Okay, they needed some time to catch uh, their breath. Here's a Yahoo that was sent in by Level 9000, Yah, Drew, Drew, Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's from an anonymous Yahoo Answers user, but I'm going to call them Tony, Tony, Dan, Dan. Asks. <laughs> that sounds like a fun nickname for Tony Danza. Uh... Tony Tony Dan Dan asks, magic to have a brother or sister. And this is the first one of these I think I've ever seen that doesn't have a fucking question mark at the end of it. And it's freaking me the fuck out. I thought that was automatically generated. I do not know how this person has hacked the Yahoo Answers service to get rid of the question mark. But it just says magic to have a brother or sister. Anyway, if you don't believe in magic, move on. Wow. How do do you magically? How do you? I'm still here. Yep. How do you magically make your parents have a baby? What spells can I use? I see. Magic to have a brother or a sister. And you don't want to make a homunculus, of course, because you could lose your arm, your leg, or your whole other brother. And that's a, I'm telling you. But then you, you get a big, like, metal brother, and that's fun. It's not ideal, I'm just saying. But he's, like, tra- impervious to damage. Yeah, but he can't, uh you know interact with himself listen (laughs) if you're trying to get a brother or sister you don't want to just do an even trade by you know sending your other brother through the door truth lost forever and that's true that's what i know about this so 
Be you careful. Could give your, you could uh, gift your parents an all-expenses-paid weekend at beaches, and that is a kind of magic. It's going to be worked on them in a big, big way. Once they aren't worrying about buying their own cocktails, the right sort of music comes on, the, the, the rhythm of the waves, and I think your parents are going to be making love. Ooh, uh, before yeah. you know it, and maybe yeah. use magically use telekinesis to remove from their luggage their jimmy caps. <laughs> just right before hey, they listen. go out the door, use that Matilda magic to just re- abscond with those jimmy caps. Hey, how come the kids never give the parents the talk? You ever think about that? Yeah, yeah. Just a kid sits down, and parent. Listen, I want to tell you something. It's going to blow your mind, dude. Maybe you could also, how old do you think that this question asker is? Hmm. I would rather not sort of, I need the cover fire of of a lot of different possible ages that I can pretend I was assuming. If they're young enough, they could steal a baby and then not be tried as an adult. So like, maybe That's not magic. That is not magic. That's not magic. Well, if they did like, Press the digitation to steal the baby and did like some like oh, look over here poof and then they were gone with the baby. That's magic. Yeah, yeah. And then what they what do they what they say to the parents when they bring home this baby that's not theirs? I found it in the fairy glen. Okay, so that's not gonna fly. Well, if the parents don't believe in magic, they can move on. Are you sure you want a brother or sister? Listen. I have a five week old. Um, it's a lot. Are you sure you want to put that on your parents? Like they have you talk a big game about wanting a magical brother or sister. Um, but like, are you gonna put in the hours to like change the diapers and everything? Question asker. No. I'm not sure that you are. No, of course not. That's not magic. But Justin, don't you like having brothers? No, I do. They're very profitable. <laughs> um my <laughs> My whole my whole career is based on this whole fraternal energy yeah, sure. that we've built here. And I'm and if you guys if anything happened to you guys, I don't know how my net worth would ever recover. That's a weird thing to say if you're deep in debt, isn't it? My net worth. Um Do you think anyway. that musical artists who create doing it songs like uh-huh. Uh-huh. um How Does It Feel by D'Angelo, Untitled, How Does It Feel? Uh, it, that is a kind of spell. To create more brothers and sisters. Yes, D'Angelo is like a world. bard. Music engages like every part of your brain. It's the closest thing to magic that we have here on this. Uh, yeah, I mean that song in particular just grabs me right by the mm-hmm. don- right by the dong. We always put it in our pre-show playlist, and I'm not positive what we're trying to achieve with it <laughs> always being in there. But it's, I mean, it's a slammer and it's a jammer, and there's no denying. Yeah, that. but we bookend it with like. You know, fun song, fun song, doing it song, fun song, fun, like. Well, yeah. Ju- yeah, I mean, Justin's into some weird, like, fucking ska Zydeco. That is a, just a real hog slayer. So we put that in there right after the the How Does It Feel. To just remind people, they are at a comedy show, and it's not an appropriate place to magically create a new brother or sister. But so. if during that time period, like, what is it? I, 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 Untitled is, what, four and a half, six minutes long? It's like long? six minutes long, yeah. yeah. Six minutes long, yeah. That's fine. That's like, you're good. More than uh, enough time. <laughs> I'm deeply uncomfortable. Uh, how about another question? You got it, baby. Uh, my mom and I often go out to eat together. I enjoy spending the time with her, except one thing. My mom insists on bringing her own condiments. And I don't just mean ketchup packets. Bruh. As if that would be <laughs> acceptable. Uh, if we're going to a place like Arby's, she'll bring Ziploc bags full of her own pickles. Bruh! Why do you Arby's want us to dunk those. on your mom? Why do you want us to dunk on your mom? Why have you done this to your mom? Tomatoes. She doesn't like the ones they have. Oh, my God. And the things like salad dressing, ketchup, barbecue sauce, etc. She'll often bring sauces from other fast food places that she likes better. Bruh! She also brings baggies full of candy and cookies for dessert. <laughs> Why do you offer your mom up as tribute? This is she un- says that this is all perfectly normal, and no one in the restaurant will notice her doing this. Okay, it's not they do. It's not perfectly normal. She knows that. Your mom's fucking with you if she thinks it's normal. Your mom's w- welcome to do whatever she wants. She's an accomplished lady and a, a, a mom and a hardworking woman. She knows that this is messed up. Should I be embarrassed to be seen with this picnic arrangement, or is she right 
that it's no big deal. Help. That's from Condiment Crisis in Tennessee. There's, 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 oh my God. There's two parts to this. One, your mom is a, is a flavor pioneer and she's on some next level shit. And why don't they have pickles at Arby's? What are you going to fucking pair roast beef with a pickle? No. Because they're so restrained otherwise at Arby's, Griffin? Yeah, okay. They have We have the meat. We don't have the old vegetables that we got all vinegary and weird. Okay, your mom's on some next level shit. I will not deny that. They're, like, they're but for the grace of God. I, I would absolutely love to bring, uh, y- you know, some, some McDonald's ketchup to the BK because their ketchup is a fucking joke. I get it. That's the first thing. The second thing, though, is that this is a social crime. This is not. This is not how we do things here around these parts. We don't bring pickles to Arby's. As much as I would love to, we can't. And we, yeah, yeah. one person cannot sort of. That does not represent a groundswell to sort of change the societal norms under which we have all been crushed. And the and- Arby's Corporation has invested a lot of money in making sure that their dishes taste good to the highest number of consumers. Like, where do you get off going behind Arby's back and being like, "Mm, I think one thing would be pickles. Like, no, you don't actually. But what if Mr. Arby sees that? Mr. Arby sees the pickles and is like, pickles, of course. Oh, it's (gasps) a nothing you do situation now. But then it's like this embarrassing thing because Arby's don't have pickles. Where Arby's is like calling McDonald's, like, "Hey guys, um, <laughs> this is hard for me." But like, where the fuck do you get? Where pickles? do you get them pickles? Where do you even get pickles? Which which part of this? Okay, that's why they won't offer pickles. By the way, they just don't. They are no idea. They take forever. We try to do it. We put a bunch of cucumbers in a barrel, and it takes forever. And we don't know what we're doing. We don't over have here. time for that. We don't have time for any of this. Which which aspect of this is more upsetting? Bringing something that the restaurant, oh, like Arby's, doesn't have, or bringing something they do have, but you like your version better. So bringing pickles, they don't have pickles, but bringing tomatoes because your tomatoes are better. Which one of those? This is this is mommy's special horsey sauce. I can't. Um, I can't I decide think... which one. If I was an Arby's employee who took a lot of pride in my work. Which one I would be more upset well, by? You would not get the opportunity to see both. Because if I see one, either objects we do not have or objects we do have that you prefer elsewhere, I would have called the police after the first one. You know? Maybe it's that you think, like, McDonald's tomatoes taste better on Arby's sandwiches, but Arby's tomatoes taste better on Subway sandwiches, and you're just rotating your tomatoes around. Get it together, guys. Teamwork. Make Call each other. Work. Get it. Call each other. You got the wrong tomatoes. It's a par- it's a parent trap situation. I I actually find myself the most disturbed by bringing her <clears throat> like the idea of being in Arby's, watching someone finish their uh, big Montana, and then reach into their bag to it's like the Arby's waiter comes over like we all done here and like uh, <laughs> no, can I bring you anything t- else. Can I get you anything else? Uh, no, actually, it's time for dessert. And then just extracting a bag of hard candies and that your mom sits there and eats in the middle of Arby's. Um, That's very upsetting uh, to me. I think, uh, yes, I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine. Okay, your mom knows what she's doing, and this may be all to irritate you, which is great. Very good for me. Here's the. Th- I, I also just want to dispel one thing too. When your mom says that no one will notice, um, I've worked many, uh, many jobs in my life, and after a while, any new, any new information that comes into the place that you work, you immediately latch onto because yeah, it's yes. different than everyday else. So I guarantee the crinkle of a plastic bag opening, zip, like they are, they are honing in on that like a peregrine falcon. That is that is that is drawing all of their attention, and they are going to talk about for weeks the yes. person who brought pickles into Arby's. I don't I'm, think you should rob culture of your mom. Like I think that like if I was seated across the, I mean, I would never eat inside an Arby's. I don't understand. I don't understand it. But if I did eat an Arby's and I saw a woman um, using her own condiments in a and extracting pickles from a baggie she brought from home. That would like be all I talked about for the next two days. And your mom is giving that gift to people every single day. Like she's just grinding it out 
and making other people's lives delightful. And and like, I don't understand why we're always rushing to sort of sand the rough edges down off of humanity when it's it's not hurting anybody. It's just a delightful thing for everyone to enjoy. Maybe just enjoy these eccentricities of your mother because like this is a fun thing that makes your mom special to you and not something that like you need to change about her to make her more bland. But she's not stealing from the Arby's. And even if she was, now she's some kind of, you know, Arby's cat burglar. And that's also interesting it's very in its good. own way. Or maybe just bring like a privacy curtain that you can put up. And then whatever you do, vis a vis pickles and uh, homebrew condiments behind the curtain is nobody's business, but yours, your moms and gods. There's going to come a day when Arby's is out of ketchup and they don't have any. And it's going to be very embarrassing for Arby's and the people there in Arby's. And your mom's going to be like, hey, boo, do not trip. And she's going to extract four different ketchups for you to enjoy. And on that day, your mother will be the hero of Arby's. Now, will she share with other people? I'm sure she would. She's a very generous, particular woman. And I'm sure she will share. But that day, you it will all make sense. That that will be your signs. Yes, that will be your yes. that will be your swing or uh, swing away, Russ. Like it, this will be why it all makes sense and why it's all been happening leading to that exact moment when your mom's the Arby's hero. I do want to say I remember hearing on the news when KFC ran out of chicken. Your mom came in like some sort of like legendary samurai. And came in and was like, let me get some chicken. They're like, we don't have any chicken. And she was like, oh, it's fine. And then she pulled out a big old hefty bag full of raw chicken meat that she carries <laughs> with her because she prefers her raw chicken meat to KFCs. And that is the story of how she became the new Colonel Sanders. Sorry, Reba. It was a short run, but uh, Greg's but, mom here needs uh, needs the hat. A lot Does of Colonel people... Sanders wear a hat? We're never uh, sure. When it's sunny, um, a lot of people don't talk about the fact that Arby's will fry up whatever meat you bring them. <laughs> a lot of times no after a big day. No questions of, asked. No questions asked. A lot of times when I have a big day of fishing, I'll bring in my catch of the day. and What kind, kind of, of fi- What kind of fish? What? A what rainbow, kind of- delicious rainbow trout. And then I'll g- g- gut it right there on the floor of the Arby's. Mm-hmm. I'll lay out some newspapers. It doesn't do anything, but I want to look polite. I'll gut it right there. I'll slop the the carcass onto the counter, and I'll say, fry it up right for me, Curtis. Because Curtis is my guy at the Hal Greer Arby's. Uh, fry it up right for me, Curtis. And the, no questions asked. He will season it to perfection. He will scale it. To an extent, you are going to get some scales because it's still Arby's. It's just Curtis. <laughs> it's, just, it's just Curtis. He's doing his best. He doesn't do this a lot. But then uh, they'll fry it up for you. it make a great seafood dinner for you and your family. Man, I am thinking Arby's right now. Yeah, now I am kind of fucking hungry. Happy this always Ar- happens to me. Arby's, how about that sponsored episode? Yeah. Arby's? Can you get at us, please? Everybody, everybody tweeted Arby's. I know they're down. I know they're down to clown when balance the adventure zone arc uh when the balance arc ended they like tweeted about it with a little image they made of like Arby's props dressed up as our characters like they definitely are down to clown they know Just our give style. us some money to talk about Arby's for an come hour on. come on come on no, the problem no, is you've... we've been giving them all this free advertisement we've got to like withhold for you know what 400 to 500 no Arby's mention unless we see That's it. that cheddar fucking lock out Shut or pay us in a mountain of freebie coupons that we can Hell give away yeah. to listeners at live shows. I will accept oh. that payment if you just send us a mountain of coupons. Anyway. No, I would love money, actually. <laughs> money would be great, too. <laughs> half way, and half, 50-50. Because we, there, I, I think there is a sort of revenue split we do with Max Fun. And if we show up to Jesse's door with a fistful of Arby's coupons and say, like, did we do it good this time? <laughs> um, I think he would be very disappointed. I know, uh, Jesse. He's going to go fucking hog wild, get some <laughs> mott sticks, some, some potato bu- cakes. Some Bufords. A <laughs> couple Bufies. He's going to take his entire beautiful family to an all-you-can-eat buffet at Arby's of his own creation. Um. Anyway. Dad's, guys- tr- dad's treat. <laughs> <laughs> this one's on the McElroy's. Everybody get all the get all God the bless us, handle. everyone. Uh, let's go to the money zone. 
Yes, absolutely. Hey, I want to tell you about me undies. These are mine. They're my undies, but Whoa. you can have them. You can have them too. They're a great balance of comfortable fit and exciting prints. They use a sustainably sourced naturally soft fiber that starts with beechwood trees and ends with amazingly soft fabric. MeUndies adventurous prints are all limited edition and new patterns are released every few weeks and for any first time purchasers when you purchase MeUndies you get 20% off and free shipping. They are so sure you're going to love their underwear they offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair you get a full refund. To get 20% off your first pair free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee go to MeUndies.com slash my brother. That's MeUndies.com slash my brother. I also want to These... tell you I, I want to tell you about Squarespace. Okay. Here's the thing. I'm a big fan of Squarespace. Uh, I use it for a lot of different projects, and you've probably heard me talk about that before, but don't tune me out. Please, please keep listening because Squarespace is great. It's so intuitive, easy to learn, easy to use, and easy to make a really amazing website that's going to impress both your friends and also professional people who are, are maybe looking to hire you or pay you for things. You can publish uh, blogs or other content. You can sell products and services. Uh, you can announce an upcoming event or special project, which is something we use it for a lot. Uh, and it has beautiful customizable templates that help you create, uh, that are created by world-class designers. And everything is optimized for mobile right out the gate. So you don't have to do any kind of special arranging or worry about how it's gonna show up on phones. It's easy. And they have built-in search engine optimization and free secure hosting and the ability to choose from over 200 domain extensions and customer support waiting for you 24-7 if you need it. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you are ready to launch, use the offer code MYBROTHER, all one word, MYBROTHER, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com, promo code MYBROTHER. I want to tell you all about Ready, Set, Comedy. It gives listeners advice on everyday situations. Wait a fucking hmm. second. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. I can't stress this enough. No one else is doing this. We are very original. We did not steal this idea. Listen to our very unique podcast, Ready, Set, Comedy. It's one of a kind. Okay, we may have borrowed it slightly, but it's still very original. Well, not the very first, but we didn't know that when we started. Fine, we straight up stole the premise from a bim bam, and it says... So very sorry. So that's Ready, Set, Comedy, who uh, stole our shit. You can find them wherever podcasts are and in court with us and soon. In court. So we'll see you all in court. Uh, I have a Jumbotron message. This one's for Liz Ard, and it's from a secret fan. I'm very nervous now. Let's read the message. Thanks to the members of the Trash Heap for being a bunch of ridiculous nerds over the past year and a half. I hope the future is full of memes, role-playing discussions, and even more memes until we achieve world domination in the name of our glorious Lizard Queen. Oh, no. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. I mean, finding out about the glorious Lizard Queen is rough, but when uh, any time an anonymous message shows up on the show, I get very nervous, but this was pretty benign, so thank you for that. This next, uh, this next message is from Joseph, and it's for Tyler and the TSG family. Shout out to my boy Tyler and all of my TSG family for introducing me to the brothers through Monster Factory because they've gotten me through some very tough times. Also, Tyler, you're a freak, and I'm going to eat you. <laughs> what? That's <laughs> what? <laughs> Probably an inside joke, but if it's not, get out of there, not. Tyler. And Tyler, run. Run, Tyler, run. And TSG family. Get out of there. Get, Get out, out of there. there. The whole Get crew. Hey guys, this is Adam Conover. You may know me from my true TV show, Adam Ruins Everything. Well, guess what? Now we're doing a podcast version right here on Maximum Fun. What we do is we take all the interesting, fascinating experts that we talk to for just a couple minutes on the show, and we sit with them for an entire podcast, really going deep and getting into the fascinating details of their work. Find Adam Ruins Everything wherever you get your podcasts or at MaximumFun.org. Here's a Yahoo that I got it's from level 9,000. Yeah, true, 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 Davenport. Thank you, Drew. And maybe we don't want to do this one as anonymous user. I'm going to call him Rod asks, on the podcast, My Brother, My Brother, and Me, how do you tell which one is talking? Oh. I've listened to many episodes and clips of Mabim Bam and watched the show, and I can still never tell who is talking. If I'm actively trying, I can distinguish Griffin, but I have never once known if it is Justin or Travis. Please, I know fans mind this forum for content. Is there a hack or a guide or anything? Well, I think 
maybe one of the issues people run into is I also don't know which one of us is talking at any, any given time. And that's why I interrupt so much. Because sometimes, like, Justin will be talking and I'll think, that's me it's talking. It's you. Yeah. And that's, I'm not going anywhere. I shouldn't interrupt myself. Yeah. What am I uh, saying? This is garbage. This is a bad joke. Griffin, I, uh, here's the first thing I'll say. It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> It really, it really doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter which one of us is talking. Yeah, it, th- this is a widespread problem. We are I very, get... yeah, th- we get this all the time. Like, we are very rarely giving in in order instructions on how to like fix your kitchen sink or something that would necessitate proper order and 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 you really being clued into who the advice is coming from. Just like it doesn't fucking. Matter. I do get tweets. It's just like, dude, your whole mango shit. That was a real funny run, See, dude. And I, like, but at least I'll... that's on the same show because I get tweets a lot that are like, I love you on Sawbones, and that and that's not me. I I I also don't do Monster Factory or quality control. That's Justin. Damn, dude, I, so, what do you do? Someone once tweeted that they don't listen to Schmanners because they don't like me. And it's like, well, hey. hold on a second. Don't run to listen. That's it. Give it that, a chance. I'm not on that shit. Um, I don't I don't know if we want to do this one. I it's would little, love to hear no. I have to hear what people have answered. Oh, there's no answers. So that's bad for us. That's not good for our brand, I would say. Uh, here's another Yahoo. This one was sent in by Adrian Cowles. Thank you, Adrian. It's Yahoo Answers user Blue who asks. Is there anything you're not allowed to write on a headstone? Can you say, and then there's four asterisks here, so I'm going to assume it says piss, Mm -hmm. or any other swears on a headstone? What about any sexual references? Is it all right if it's only implied? For example, oh, gross. (laughs) For example, least exciting hole I've ever been in. Oh, wow. Machi. I'd prefer a real answer because I'm genuinely curious, but if you have a funny reply, I'm not going to rain on your parade, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, what can you put on? What can you not put on a headstone? Because I've never seen one where you're walking through and it's just like, you know, Bill Ups, January 14th, 1930 to 2005. And then it's like, you know, Jermichael, and then a couple dates, and then you walk, and then there's one that's just like, ass. And that's all it says. Fuck, I'm dead. Oh, fuck, I'm (laughs) dead. Oh, fuck. Can you put whatever name you want on there? Like, could I just put, like, Elvis Presley on mine? Oh, that's really fun. Right? And then people will be walking by like, oh, these are so old. Huh? Wait. Huh? There's no, there's no way, right? It could be like that, um... Uh, what's it called? Lentricular pattern, where like depending on what angle you're looking at the head, the headstone, it says different stuff. So you look at it from the left, and it says like, you, you know, Elvis Presley. But then on, from the right side, it's like, nah, I'm just kidding. It's Travis. Nah, just Travis. But major, gotcha. major thing, look. One thing you want to avoid is timeliness. Um, like I, you often will see headstones with big barcodes on them, and they say like, scan this with your QCAT for free coupons. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like, yeah. Nobody has a QCAT anymore, and nobody even listening to this podcast knows what, knows what the fuck you're talking, talking about. about. How yeah. much do I have to pay to make my headstone a Pokestop? Is that still a thing? <laughs> <laughs> remember me. I know how to make the kids remember me by handing out free potions and Pokeballs when you come and pay your respects. There's a, there's a Lugia boss fight happening at Travis's final resting place. <laughs> Come on, teens, <laughs> gather round. I this dropped the lure gonna... at Travis. He died as he lived, fighting, surrounded by surrounded by teens <laughs> staring at their phones. Um, that's a good one. Can you do Calvin pissing on the adjacent headstone? Oh, oh my yeah, God. it's so good. like an eternal flame, but with water or piss. No, I'm not saying literally spray oh, the headstone. Not like a fountain. I think. No, erosion would be a factor at that point. We don't actually want to erode. That seems rude. Um, but would be less rude is if the cartoon boy Calvin was pissing on Billups' tombstone immediately next door. And then the Billups family would come and say, like, did you just fucking see this? <laughs> Are you fucking see this shit? They can't do that, right? Well, there's no law in the books. <laughs> Can I, so I've bought the plot of land, right? Maybe I go buy it today. Can I build a tiny house on it now? (laughs) 
with my just land. A, with just a trap door in the living yes, room when you exactly. start to feel real close. Yeah. <laughs> and then I just drop out the bottom. And then my tiny house becomes my Ozymandias tombstone. Look upon my tiny house. <laughs> Oh, Can I get a vending machine that is constantly restocked with Snickers bars and <laughs> whatchamacallits and Andy Cap's hottest fries and Takis, but also just little pamphlets just sort of describing my sort of adventure? <laughs> those would be those would be complimentary, I'm assuming. <laughs> no, they would be 35 cents. Same price as a bunch of mints, but I gotta cut a profit some way. Got to restock this thing, don't I? What about I'm just saying you're walking, you're walking through the, the graveyard. That's hungry work. And then you see one, and you're, you don't get a lot out of the tombstones. You pretend to. It's just like, oh, Frederick, long life, probably in a couple of the big wars. Thank, what a great life. But really, you're just thinking like, I wish this tombstone was full of whatchamacallits and <laughs> Snickers bars. I'm here to satisfy Forever. That forever, would be that would be a good thing to put on your tombstone. <laughs> I'm here to satisfy. Or maybe just like forever. maybe it just has treasure with an arrow pointing down and a question mark. Yeah. So that way it's like, um, are you sure? Is it worth it? Huh? Maybe come back uh, when it's dark. Dig me up. Get me out of here. Here is another question. I went to surprise my friend by going to their house since I haven't seen them in a while. But instead of them, I scared their mother half to death and learned they were out in a movie. Now I've been sitting in their bedroom for four hours waiting for them, and I think their family thinks I've left. I'm afraid to suddenly walk downstairs and take my leave and scare them again, as well as make them think I was just snooping slash loitering in their child's bedroom. You are. How do I leave? Should I suck it up and go downstairs, wait till everyone is asleep to leave, stay the night and leave when everyone is gone in the morning? Christ. Help. That's from Confined oh in God. Cleveland. What have you done? No. What have you done to me? What have you done to me? Griffin is there now. And now I'm there. I'm in the room too because you put me there by making by making me hear this. And now I'm in the moment and I'm feeling everything you're feeling and it's a nightmare. How could you do this to Griffin? Why can't that's we ever get a question that's just like, about. why can't we just get a question that's just like, I went to a candy store and they were having an everything's free sale. And then I'm there with my mind, astral projecting into the, the listener's experience. And I'm like, mm, candy tape. Maybe we should just do one episode that's all people sending in like, I found myself in a social, like a social situation and I handled it and it wasn't a problem at all and you don't need to worry about it. And like, then I'm there and I'm there and I'm role playing what it would be like to be able to handle literally any social situation expertly. I just, I'm confused about the timeline. Okay. You got there. The mother was like, ah. Yeah. Were you trying to sneak ah, into the it's house? Div it's div up. Ah. And then you're like, um, hey, I was here to see Flinchin. And they're like, I'm sorry, div up. Flinchin's at a film. And then were you like, <laughs> you got the I'll, cinema. Wait, I'll wait in their bedroom. <laughs> like, I don't understand how you got to the point you're at. Did you sneak behind the mother while she was making a sandwich? Like, I don't understand how you got in, into this situation. Okay. Because, I, I'm sorry, Divum. Here's, Divum, was it? Here's the problem. It's Divum. Divum. And okay. Divum and Div Flinchin. Divum. There was a moment where the mother in question probably awkwardly said something like, would you like to wait for them? And what you should have done is said, no. No, I do not. <laughs> because I have I things I could be doing. No. Just tell them I stopped by and tell Flinchin to give me a call when they're back. The other thing I need to know about this is, all right, did you go like down the block or is this like a grand gesture, three hour road trip kind of thing? Oh, good that, question. That is very confusing to me. I got to understand why you would stay unless you didn't have anywhere else to go. Folks, don't surprise people with presents. Remember what we were just talking about with social situations? I don't think it's great. It's not great for me personally if anybody on planet Earth showed up out of the blue and was like, hey, I'm foisting this social situation on you. You have not in any way girded yourself for prepared remarks. But now it's happening now. I was trying that's to not, think. That's not a good zone. I was trying to think if they, like, and I, at first I thought, well, Justin, hold on. Because if like David Tennant or Oscar Isaac showed up and was like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to hang out with you today. But no, because nope. I would be 
unusable as a human. Exactly. Yes. Right. Like, You're not I w- prepared. I wouldn't be prepared for it. Yeah, it, no, don't do this. If ifs and buts were candies and buts, then this situation would never have happened. But the problem is that it did, and they're there, and now what? Okay. And, and now what? Your only option is to put on Flinchin's clothes, oh, come God. downstairs, and okay. convince the family that you are Flinchin. Talented and Mr. Flinch. Mm-hmm. Hey, mother, it was a delightful film. I really enjoyed it, but I've been in my in in the loo for the past hour, and now I'm going out for a stroll. No questions. <laughs> no questions. I'm wearing this hockey mask for hockey. <laughs> <laughs> As you've almost certainly surmised, I'm playing hockey <laughs> later, mother. Bye. This is a new voice I cooked up, mother. <laughs> I'm trying something with my personality, mother. Bye. I'm going to Bye, toss. Mother. I'm tossing on the iced skates with my great friend Divum, and then you duck under the table and take the mask off and some of the clothes off, and you pop back up like that's right, Flinchum. We're gonna go and show the penguins who's boss. That's right. We're playing the Pittsburgh Penguins in <laughs> hockey. Uh, um, my maybe you could. Okay. This is good. Crack open the bedroom door so nobody can see you and just shout downstairs, Mother, it's Flincham. Uh, I've been enjoying the company of Divum for quite some time, and he is now to retire to his domicile. You'll see him in a moment. Don't be frightened. <laughs> be prepared. Be Fl- prepared for his presence. This is the worst imaginable situation, I think. I can't. It's hard for me to think of worse ones. Well, yeah, this. okay, Devum. Somewhere around the end of hour one, you had to Four start. Four hours to think, is a lot. You had to start to question it, right? How did you get the four hours? I don't understand how it went so long. Did you fall asleep? <laughs> Flinchlip's got one of those Caspers. Soft, you sink right into it. it. Does have the right amount of bounce though, so maybe I shouldn't say that. Well, it's the right amount of sink and bounce. True. Uh, how about another Yahoo? Sure, yeah. Uh, here's one who was sent in. It's a person, and it was sent in by Adrian Cowles. Thank you, Adrian. It's from Yahoo Answers user, oh, man, Naruto asks, and the avatar for Naruto is is Goku, so I'm wondering if I should actually read this one at all. But it's a good question, but clearly if somebody calls themselves Naruto and their avatar is Goku... It makes me assume some things about sort of their their uh, their personality and whether or not they actually want to know the answer to the now. Thing which one is it, Goku? It's uh, Goku asks, "How did the person who invented the clock know the time?" Oh shit! So back Damn. to you know, Art Art Artemetrius or whatever. Probably some old fuck. <laughs> Just like, all right, I did it. It's got 12 numbers, little gears going around. And then when a little number points at one of the 12 numbers, that lets you know what the hour is. The big or the bigger sort of arm on this one will tell you how many minutes it is. And why didn't we just also include minutes from 1 to 60 on the clock? Well, we wanted it to be hard for Griffin to tell what the time is, even when he's 30 yes. years old. But um, so here it is, the clock. And somebody's like, ah, cool. So what time is it? And then the person was like, well, fuck. I do not know what the time is. Can I just, make, can I just make that up? Because it's feeling like I got that 3 o'clock feeling. <laughs> I've Shit. got the three o'clock blues. I think uh, it's around then. Maybe they just Let's... started it at, at like 12, and that's where our whole shit started. Like, it's actually right now, whatever time it is when you listen to this, 3 p.m., but your clock says whatever time, because this old fuck just like started it at 12. Do you think you try to work backwards? Like, well, let's see. I'm feeling pretty tired, and I had a five-hour energy drink. <laughs> like, five and a half hours ago Uh and that was at actually there wasn't time then either i actually don't know this old this old fuck this fucking creep was probably just like here's a clock it is uh i just decided it's three o'clock 12 hours in a day once it gets back to three o'clock again it's a new day and then they let it run and they were like uh hey bud 
it's like totally different out. It's three o'clock again, totally different outside. It's like real dark. I'm real sleepy. So what's the deal? And then this old piece of shit was just like, yeah, it's um three, two, the sequel to three. You get two of them in each day. Okay, so you're just having fun with it at this point then. Yeah, it's the second three. You get two of them. <laughs> yeah, why, why did we start that back? Why not just a clock with 24 numbers on it? What the fuck? Why are we so cool that we only have room for 12 numbers on our clock? Grow up, old fuck. Yeah. What the put fuck? Put in 24 numbers. <clears throat> like, why wouldn't that be easier? This is, you're not than, talking about the, uh, there are most countries do it like that. But what? I don't think that, I don't think their clocks have 24 numbers on it still. This is what do I'm they? saying. It's like, why do I have to pay attention to whether it says AM or PM on my alarm clock slash coffee maker? Why can't it just be like military time across the board? It's one twenty or it's thirteen twenty. Because there's nothing sexy about like my birthday is starting sharp at seventeen. <laughs> Don't miss it. Why not? Yeah. I think that's great. I'm gonna have dinner at eighteen. You guys be there. Come like, on, Dad. That's less 18. confusing than wondering if my friend is having dinner at 6 a.m. What time does your show start? 20. <laughs> <laughs> We're li- we are children. <coughs> we we are fools. Because that is probably how they do it. Come on down to the comedy show. It's at 20 o'clock. <laughs> how is that worse than just saying eight? I can't count above 12. Because it sounds ridiculous. My show's at 2030. It starts a little later than you would expect. Not 20, 20, 30. How did they know what fucking time it was? It probably was noon. It probably, they had sundials and shit. And so when the sundial was like, there's no shadow, then they're like, okay, this is the middle one. This is noon. But the view th- just went off. So that, and that's an hour. It starts at 11. I know the view, I don't know what time is because I just invented it. I know the view comes on at 11. So if the view just went off, it's got to be close to noon. Let's all just decide. Let's all just go with noon. The end of the episode of The View, first one, like 800 BC, Meredith Vieira is like, all right, clock man, get ready. It's going to be noon. <laughs> We're going to ra- wrap it up. Three, two, one. Bum, 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 bum. Hi, this is your local news. We come on after The View. Uh, At noon, apparently. But top story today, it's noon. <laughs> it's wild, dude. We did breaking it. News, breaking news. It's, oh, wait, I'm getting an update from the booth. It's now noon 01. Wait, what? We don't say it like that? Okay, 1201. Listen to me. Hey, Victoria, did you hear? 1201. <laughs> That does now I get why the the dateline the the international dateline starts at the view. I get mm-hmm. it now. I was always confused as to why like they kept that episode of the view in the archives like mm-hmm. in in Greenwich. And now I know that that's where they keep that episode of the view safe so if anyone's clock ever gets off, they yeah. can just set it to that episode. I mean UTC the the Greenwich Mean Time is it starts right at Whoopi's house, <laughs> which is very convenient for Whoopi. If Whoopi's late to work and the view gets started late, all time gets <laughs> yeah. fucked. The world spins off its axis, yes. God. And yeah. it's a lot of responsibility, but I trust hey, her. Hey, Whoopi, stay, please. I made omelets. Please just stay for breakfast this one morning. It won't be the end of the world. Uh, It might be. <laughs> it might actually be. It might actually that be that. That explains why that one time when Whoopi was late and it still started on time, all of her cartoon friends had to go find her and bring her back right. to fight that giant owl. That's right. That's exactly how I remember it as well, Travis. It all uh, makes uh, sense. Let's, listen, we, uh, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Um, a lot of the things we said weren't true, so we'll leave those to, to you to sort of sort through. Can but you spot them, is- gumshoes? <laughs> This is true. We're doing some shows uh, in the next few months. We would love it if you would come and join us for those. We're going to be in Dallas, Houston, St. Louis, Detroit, Columbus, Phoenix, Orlando, and Atlanta. And uh, we would love it if you would come join us. If you go to MacElroyShows.com forward slash tours. Is that right, Trap? Tours, yes. plural? Tours. Yes. Go to plural. tours, plural. Then you can uh, go, uh, go, go buy tickets to those. Uh, the Dallas and Houston shows are coming up real soon. Um, so please go buy tickets for those right now and ensure your quality seating. All those shows, no matter what anybody tells you from now to the end of linear time, 
will start at 7 p.m. And I no also, matter what. I also want to say some of the shows are sold out. And I've seen people tweeting about, like, apparently, you know, scalpers buy tickets and then charge an arm and a leg. There is literally nothing we can do about that. I wish we could. I wish we could fix it. But that's why if, we do the pre-sales and stuff to try to combat that. And we just unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. But there's something you can do, which is buy all the tickets now. So scalpers can't get their grubby hands on them. And then yeah. sell them for a profit. Then sell them yes. for an arm and a leg. Uh, hey, we want our listeners to profit from scalping. We have a new merch store also. If you go to yeah. um, McElroyMerch.com, you can find our, our new store. We partnered up with uh, DFTBA on this one. Got a bunch of cool new items. There's a Munch Squad shirt. There's a Shrimp Heaven Now poster that is absolutely gorgeous. And a bunch of other stuff, too, uh, that you can find over at McElroyMerch.com. So go check yeah, if that out. If there's an item you don't see on there that you would love to have, uh, email request at com, and the people who make those sorts of decisions will see it. So yes. please do that. I uh, also want to say I'm going to C2E2 uh, in, in Chicago, uh, the conference in Chicago coming up April 6th through the 8th. Um, I've got a couple of events going on, so I'm going to be doing a couple signings uh on the friday the 6th um and also on saturday the 7th and i'm doing a show an evening with travis and friends uh with me and uh my wife Teresa and symphony sanders from uh welcome to night vale and i'm trying to wrangle some other people too but that's going to be friday night at 6 30 um and i'm also doing a podcast panel on Sunday at 4 p.m. Uh, with me, Teresa, Symphony, and Adel, uh, Matt Young, and uh, Arnie Niekamp, Adel Rafai, uh, from Hello for the Magic Tavern. Um, you can see that whole schedule and all the times and places and everything at bit.ly slash Travis C2E2. Um, and Teresa and I, uh, on April 18th, are going to be doing a live schmanners at Moon Tower Comedy Festival in uh, Austin, Texas. You can see all the details about that at bit.ly slash Moon Tower Schmanners. Uh, uh, hey, thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. You can go to MaximumFun.org and check out all the great podcasts there. Shows like Stop Podcasting Yourself, shows like Lady 2 Lady, shows like Switch Blade Sisters, and a whole bunch of others all at MaximumFun.org. If you want to see our other shows, go to McElroyShows.com. And hey, thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, putting the days to bed. It is extremely good. Uh, you want that final? Speaking of Max Fun Drive. This oh, is, or, yeah. Speaking of Max Fun, I should say, Max Fun Drive is coming up. It uh, is. It's, it's going to start April 2nd, and that's going to coincide with our 400th episode. Oh, so, wow. yeah, 400th episode and Max Fun Drive kicking off runs for just two weeks. It's going to be big times, big times everywhere. We'll be running our best episode, episode 400. We'll be offering great gifts for new and upgrading members. And you can come out and you can support shows like My Brother, My Brother, Me, The Adventure Zone, Sawbones, Wonderful, Schmanners, Trends Like These, uh, Still Buffering, all all of the macro shows you love and support, all the shows you support and love. Uh, don't miss it. Starts April 2nd. Um, and we'll be talking more about it and announcing the different reward levels and stuff like that. But just get ready and we'll see you there. Get pumped. Uh Here's the final. It was sent in by the delivery man, Seth Carlson. Thank you, Seth. It's Yahoo Answers user Snakes Everywhere who asks, What is the Dougie, and why does my mom want me to teach her how to? Will I get in trouble if I don't? Please help. <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.